Welcome to BKW Physics. I'm Mr. McConley. We're going to start this lesson by uh, doing a F net problem. In other words, a Newton's second law problem. We're going to I'm going to I'm going to do what's called a free body diagram. After I get done with that, I'm going to follow it up with some Newton's third law information, and then we're going to follow it with a with a quick demo. So, if you draw your attention here. We could, we could do something like this. We could say a person jumps out of a plane. And when a person jumps out of a the plane, they are free falling. And when a person is free falling, there are forces acting on this person. Some of them are the force of gravity, pulling that person down relentlessly. But that person eventually reaches terminal velocity where they don't fall any faster. So there must be something pushing up. And that thing that's pushing up, you can call it wind resistance, force of the wind. And then sometimes when you jump out of a plane, the wind is actually blowing sideways and causing you to like veer off course. And this would be another wind resistance. And then once you pull your parachute, now your parachute is pulled, here's the strings of the parachute going up, the parachute's up there someplace. Once you pull the strings, you actually have controls which you can steer into the wind. I don't know what you want to call them, steering maybe. And so you end up having a picture with four different forces acting in four different directions. Now if, if you are moving at a constant speed as you fall, so you're moving at a constant speed downward, and you have no side-to-side -side motion. Okay, constant speed down, no side-to-side. -side. In that case, what do you know about these forces? Well, you know that the steering force, we'll call it, is equal and opposite wind resistance. So one is a positive, one is a negative. They cancel each other out anyway in terms of vector language. They just cancel. What do you know about the wind and the FG? They're equal and opposite. Two, uh, two up and down ones. They're equal and opposite. If you're going at a constant speed, thank you, if you're going at a constant <coughs> speed, they're equal and opposite. I should, I should actually label this one. We'll call this one horizontal and this one vertical, so you don't get confused. A little confusing when I looked at that again. So we got a horizontal and a vertical wind. So you this is this is the truth right here. Now this allows us to kind of set up problems and go into more detail and find stuff that we haven't been able to find in the past. Let me uh, kind of forget about this situation. You kind of got the idea from this situation, but let's let's move on to uh, Another situation, a car. Say you got a car. Here's the car. There's my car. High quality car. And this car is, uh, this is the front of the car, if you can't tell from my horrible picture. This is the front of the car. The car is moving this way. The motion is this way. Now, motion is not a force. Force is something that causes motion. So the next thing I have to do is I have to label all the forces that are acting on this car. So this car is on the ground. There must be the gravity pulling down. There must be something holding the car up, or otherwise the car would be sinking into the ground. That's something new that you don't really know about yet. It's called Fn, and N stands for normal force. When something is sitting on the ground, when you are sitting on your chair, when a book is sitting on the table, you get the idea? That's the normal force that holds it up. It's not like a normal force is going to pick you up off your chair. It's not like a normal force is going to toss this car up into the air. A normal force is, a, is like a, a cancellation force that basically sits there and is strong enough to hold whatever you're talking about up. Okay? So, we got a normal force. That's a new one. The car is moving forward. Is there a force pulling it forward? Yeah. Yes. Well, 
yes is your first instinct, but my answer is it depends. If the car is speeding up, there definitely has to be a, an applied force that's making it speed up. But what if the car just let off the gas pedal versus driving, and they're gliding to a stop? Are they still moving forward? Yeah. Is there a force pulling them forward? No. I don't think so. So let's say that this car is, I should write it in red. Let's say this car is slowing down. Now you can think of it as the car is braking or the car is just rolling to a stop. I don't care. It's the same, it's the same picture. This car is slowing down. So if it's slowing down, there's no force pulling you forward anymore. You're just gliding to a stop. But there is something that is working against you, slowing you down, which is... A resistance. Yeah. You call it a resistance or a frictional force. FF. Where F is a friction. I heard people say resistance, that, that works too, but normally in the region's lingo language they use FF being force friction. Okay, so that would be slowing you down. So this is a situation where you let off the gas pedal and the car's just kind of rolling down to a stop. Force friction. Alright, fine. Well, what can you do with all this? Well, the first thing you would do with this situation, you'd say the net force is equal to, and you would add them all up. The frictional one, the normal one, and the gravity one. Now, excuse me. Remembering from Newton's uh, second law, we know that F net is equal to mass times acceleration. But we aren't really sure of the acceleration right now, right? Like, I don't have a way to figure that out off the top of my head. So you might have to do more work to go find acceleration. For instance, I'm giving you scenarios. I'm not actually going to plug in numbers here. You might have to say acceleration is a change in velocity over time. That's one possibility. So you might have to do that in order to get the F net and plug it in up here. Over here. Fg. You also learn that the force of gravity is mass times gravity. That's based on Newton's second law. It's actually the same thing. But this is specifically talking about gravity this time and instead of a general overriding acceleration. It's just talking about the acceleration of gravity. So, if you knew the mass of the vehicle, and you knew the acceleration of gravity, you could probably figure this out and plug it in there if you had to. The other thing you got to remember, in relationship to Fn, oh, equal. Fn, the normal force, is equal to, I heard someone say, equal to the force of gravity if the car is not sinking into the ground. And that's probably going to be the scenario that happens most often with a problem like this is that these two are going to be actually equal and opposite, so they will cancel. Cancel, cancel gone. That, that makes it easy. But it doesn't always work like that, especially if you're on a ramp. That's for a later lesson. But the last one that you don't really know anything about yet is the force of friction. There actually is an equation that says the force of friction is some mu value times the normal force. So, so, the reason I usually need to know that Fg is equal to Fg is because I need to know what Fn is to plug it in here. Woo! Okay? So sometimes you got to know this, and in order to know this, you got to know this, and you get it this way. That's why you need to know that. And that's how you use that. This mu thing we're going to talk another day about. i got a whole separate lesson on that. But I'm trying to give you the overriding idea. The overriding idea is... There's a lot of different forces acting on a situation, and you can take each one of them usually and break them down and find out information about each one and then bring it all back together to get what you're looking for. That's Newton's second law. Let's switch gears. Newton's third law. Newton's third law says when an object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts a force back on the first object, which is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. When my one hand hits my other hand, my one hand is exerting a force on my other hand. My other hand is exerting an equal and opposite force back. It seems kind of easy when I show you them clapping, but I can, I can make this a little more confusing or make you think about it a little bit more. You're driving down the road in your car. A mosquito hits the windshield. What happens to a mosquito when it hits the windshield on a car? It, it just gets, yeah, it makes one of those dots on your windshield. It's all splatters. Well, does that apply to this law? Because how could 
the mosquito doesn't seem like it could have possibly exerted the same force as the windshield. Because the mosquito was probably just like flying along and you came and you came to play with it on your mind at all. <laughs> no, you're on, the right, you're on the right track. Basically, how much force did the mosquito put on the windshield? How like, can a mosquito have... break your windshield? No. Not a chance. Okay? Maybe if a billion mosquitoes all hit your windshield at once, it might break the windshield, but that's just not happening. So, one mosquito is not breaking your windshield. So, one mosquito is putting a little bitty amount of force on your windshield. How much does your windshield have to put back on the mosquito? A little bitty, a little bitty amount. Those two forces are equal and opposite, and they still, it's still good. Newton's third law is still good. It still works. So, don't get worried. We call it an action-reaction pair, or some people call it that. And in the, in the next, I just gave you some examples. One of the examples that I've already just touched on a moment ago with the free body diagram was that the Fn, if you can see that, that says Fn and that says Fg. The normal force and the force of gravity, if you're standing, sitting, ice skating like this person is, they're equal and opposite. They cancel each other out. It's an example of Newton's third law. This is the Rocky punch. I had to throw that in there because it's Rocky. Baseball bat hitting a baseball. Yeah, now that baseball bat, you would think, oh, that baseball bat is, is applying so much force to that ball. Yeah, but the ball is applying so much force to the baseball bat. How can I prove that to you? What happens sometimes when the ball hits the bat a little bit wrong? It shatters the bat. Have you ever tried to break a baseball bat? No. It's hard to break a baseball bat. If a ball can break a baseball bat, it must be putting a lot of force on that baseball bat. Okay? So those are some examples of uh, Newton's third law, the equal and opposite, the action-reaction pair. Next thing I want to do to sort of switch gears here is uh, bring up, I'm going to do a little demo.